So hello and welcome back to the Computer Labs YouTube channel. So if you are new to my channel, I do all sorts of reviews from network, home network gear, Wi-Fi to editing in photo editing programs. So a bit varied in what I do, but my main role, uh, main job in this world is doing computer networks, fixing computers and doing small business and home network installations. Uh, so that can be anything from improving the Wi-Fi to uh, a new build and putting a uh, computer network into a new build. So. Uh, with that in mind, what am I looking at? So, and what are we going to be looking at in this video? We're going to be looking at some ingenious gear uh, that they have kindly sent free of charge for review. Obviously, they're not paying for the video to be done, but they have sent me the um, the gear for free, which is a switch and a access point. So, if you're not familiar with networking, uh, an access point, a Wi-Fi access point, uh, allows your iPads and iPhones to connect wirelessly to the internet usually through a switch um, or a router of some sort. So if you've got your home router at home at the moment supplied by your uh, broadband provider, that will have a Wi-Fi point uh, already built into it. What these Wi-Fi access point is, is basically it is the Wi-Fi side taken out uh, and you can screw that onto your wall uh, to somewhere that has um, a better area so maybe central to the house instead of it being sat on a, on a cupboard at the front door or something like that so the access point gives the uh, better spread of wi-fi and also you can put multiple wi-fi access points in different parts if you've got a big house so with that in mind uh, let's have a look so i'm going to do an unboxing on a separate video um, which i will run in a second uh, and i'll flip the camera around i'm going to just do the down on view uh, so i'll just show you what ingenious have sent me first uh, so they have sent me uh, the Ingenious uh, access point, uh, which is the Wi-Fi access point. Model number is ECW120. So they've sent me that. And they've also, to go with that, they have sent me the, um, if I just get on camera, it is the ECS1000, is it 1000? And 8P uh, is the model number. And it's an 8-port gigabit PoE L2 managed switch. So like I said, they sent me both of these uh, for free, but they're not paying for the review. So it will be an honest review of what I think of these. Uh, the review just before, uh, a couple of months ago, which I did of the SkyKey and the EAP1250, was it? Yes, yeah, so the EAP1250 and the SkyKey, the review I did it on. I wasn't overly impressed. I usually use Unify and Ubiquitous stuff. Uh, and it just seemed a bit clunky, the setting up. So uh, the good guys at Ingenious have sent me these across, which are going to be set up with using the Sky Key as well. Uh, but they've also sent me across a cheat sheet uh, for getting started. So uh, we'll, I'll follow that to the, the letter, see how easy it is to set up. Uh, we'll get these set up on the bench, uh, which is about 15 foot to my right here. Once they're set up on the bench, I will then check the Wi-Fi speed and just see the throughput from where I'm sat here. So I'll be quite near to the access point, but it, I think it's a fair test if I can get that up and running uh, and also I'll show you on the screen. So the Ingenious themselves, if I just flick the screen across, uh, this is their website. Um, so the, when I've had a route around their website, actually I wasn't familiar with the actual uh, manufacturers Ingenious, but they have been going a while. Uh, you can look on their website to see uh, how long the company's been running. Uh, and you can see there the Sky Key, um, the sky key one which we're going to test uh, so what the sky key allows you to do it basically gives you access to the computer network um, through a front end uh, so you can see exactly what's going on uh, and also you can log in remotely as you can see there somebody sat on a beach you can log in remotely to manage your computer network um, so they are a good tool for uh, admins um, very good for small to medium sized businesses uh, to get started and get a decent internet connection so like I said, we'll flip across to the other one, we'll get them unboxed, uh, and once we've got them unboxed, then I'll go into the setting up uh, of the actual account uh, and how easy it is to get it up and running. Okay, so like I said earlier, I will do the uh, unboxing of these products, uh, but I'm not going to cover them in too much detail because uh, I have covered the Sky Key on a previous video. So I'm using the Sky Key to control the network on the uh, local side, so anything on this side of the network inside the premises. And also you can use the Sky Key to control uh, the network from via the internet from the Ingenious Cloud. Uh, and you can see here the cloud enabled, the uh, eight port PoE switch is uh, cloud enabled. So we'll get this out of the box. Obviously it comes with the manual uh, with the instructions there on how to get it set up. And we'll get the eight port PoE switch and genius switch out of the bag. Uh, so quite a nice looking unit, not quite as well built as Unify, but uh, it's all about the software on these. And you see it's got several lights on the front, LAN ports, PoE ports, uh, LED mode, uh, PoE mode, um, 
so it's got a land mode and poe mode i'm not sure what that quite is uh, yet but we'll have a look when we get into it dc in an earth screw and a small on off rocker switch on the back so not bad it feels quite uh, uh, nice well built now i'm not clean on these the power bricks uh, i tend to prefer the just the direct power in with the transformer built into the switch uh, it's a it's more tidy but this is the um forget to focus the power brick for the poe switch obviously comes with the fly lead and some feet for the underside of the switch this is if you're mounting it uh, so not wall mounting it but actually putting it on um, inside your rack or unit or just put it on a shelf or something like that so you just put the feet on there just to keep the air circulation and vibration down i'm not sure if there's any fans in this i think it's fanless uh, but yeah goes on the bottom like so Nice heavy unit, so it sits quite tidy. Also, you get two screws with some roll plugs, so you can wall mount it, for example, sort of like that sort of style, onto the wall, two screws that hook in. Pretty standard on this type of thing. Let's get the box out of the way in the bag uh, and the installation manual. So we'll put that to one side for now. And then let's get the access point out, uh, if I can get it open. So let's get the box open. Let's have a look at this access point, which is the Ingenious ECW120. Feels nice and solid. Um, feels better quality than the previous one that I reviewed. Um, so it feels well built. A different mounting clip than I'm used to. On the underside, you've got the RJ45 and a separate um, port for using your 12 volt power supply if you're not using PoE. Um, obviously, if you're not using PoE, you'll need to supply power to the unit somehow. You also get a circular mounting bracket, which must go on there somehow. I'm not quite sure at this point, but you'll see I do look at the instructions in a second. So yeah, pull that to one side. Usual stuff, instructions on how to connect it to the uh, to the Ingenious Cloud service. Put that box to the side, and let's have a look at what you get in the box inside the box. So you get a bag of clips, and I'll just put these down. A couple of roll plugs with two screws for mounting it into plasterboard, and a couple of standoffs, uh, which obviously at this point I'm just having a look and just see what you get. But you get a couple of T clips. Uh, two short screws and two long screws and at this point i'm thinking how does that go in there what happens here does that clip on there uh, and now we best have a look at the instructions being a bloke i try it first and then look at the instructions afterwards so a quick look at the instructions later and it actually shows you so i'll hold up the instructions so you can see what's going on but basically there's two different sizes of a t-bar clip which um which i'm showing in the center there um so what that is ideal for is if you're doing a ceiling mount and you've got these polystyrene uh, roof panels the square ones that have the metal work around them uh, and that's sort of a t-shape so that would be ideal for clipping onto there so you get a shorter screw to just clamp it on there and it just clips on over that bracket you get two different sizes and you also get two standoffs now if you're mounting it to a wall and just using this circular bracket then the shorter screws go in first so you'd screw them into the uh, there's a metal screw in the center of this uh, the cross shape that you can see there so I'm just trying to hold it up to the camera while screwing it in so you can see what's going on so yeah you screw them in a bit further but you get the idea you just put the screws in like so and then the white uh, circular bracket there that would be screwed to the wall already and then you just offer it up and then it would spin round and then lock itself into position on there so that's sort of the wall mount and probably could use it as a ceiling mount as well um if you're not mounting it to sort of a t-bar so i'll take them two screws out and i'll just show you the actual brackets themselves uh, and what you get there so you get the two smaller ones and the two larger t-bracket mounts and let me just zoom this camera in a bit actually in a minute so we can see a bit nearer so you get two smaller t-clips two larger t-clips four screws too short too long and two standoff brackets which go on like so which allow you to stand the access point off your uh, t-bar that you're mounting it to and obviously the longer screws are for if you're using the standoff on the clip itself so you get a good variation really of clips and different options to mount these brackets onto wall ceilings or um false ceilings and stuff like that so with that in mind let's get the kit laid out on the table so i can show you it being connected up so to go through it again we've got the eight port ingenious poe switch we've got the ingenious ecw 120 access point 
and we're controlling that via the ingenious sky key one so i think first of all let's just get them to one side let's get power onto the switch and this is the first time i switched it on so i'm sort of doing it live um so i've never used like i said the ingenious stuff before so let's get it plugged in it's already switched on so we're okay and it's just doing the usual uh, boot that you'd expect from I, a normal switch everything flashing and doing a test Obviously, we're going to be powering the uh, access point from this switch using the PoE on uh, this device. So I'm just waiting for it to boot. Just notice on the front here, you've got this option here. We've got LAN mode and then PoE mode, which I'm presuming if you push this button next to it, it switches across, which doesn't seem to have done any... Oh, no, it might have done something. Or it might still be in boot mode at this point. Not quite sure. I think it's still booting up. I've just pushed that button next to it, which is a bit strange. It's got a LAN mode and a PoE mode. You'd expect, you know, even though it's still on LAN, you'd expect the PoE to be working as well. If I just hold it to camera, you can see what I mean if I can get it to focus. This is two flashing lights in the front. Obviously, you've got the power that's flashing, fault light and PoE max. But these two lights here, the LAN mode and the PoE mode, um, and you've got the LED mode button next to it. And I was presuming if you push that, that it would change the LAN mode or PoE mode. Maybe it's just cycling through it automatically, but it seems to be. Uh, as I'm pushing that button there. Uh, I've had a quick look at the instructions on that and I can't see anything that indicates what that button is for. Uh, I will have a look in a bit more detail, but I'm going to connect it up as if you are sort of connecting up yourself. Uh, so I'm not going to change anything and I'm going to expect or hopefully expect everything to just work, but we'll find out anyway as we connect it up. Uh, so let's get the internet connected to the switch. So I'm just putting the internet, um, so the uplink into the... Uh, port 8 on the switch so you see that's flashing there and that's telling us that we've got an internet connection uh, we've got a connection and we've got an internet connection all this data going backward and forward from that point uh, so that's a good sign that we've got something going on there uh, and now i just need to get another cable while that's hopefully sorting itself out um, it is a switch uh, and all it, it is a managed switch which means you can access some of the um, details within the switch uh, it should be sort of configured for default settings and work as we plug it in as a default so i'll get the sky key connected on the back of the sky key it's been out of focus let me just get it to focus you see you've got a couple of options lan one and lan two and lan one is the one we want which is the poe switch which will give power to the sky key so again i don't need a separate power supply for that if i'm using this particular switch or another switch that's got poe on it so if i just try and get it in to sit still a bit on the camera so we can see what's happening get it going like so okay so that's the sky key connected seems to be uh, receiving data as well both lights on port one are i've got the ones flickering to zoom it in a bit more so you can see you can see one flickering so again that looks like it's doing what it uh, should be doing not sure why it's got the orange light again on the sky key but like I said, I'm going to do this as if you just, you've got all this kit, you're going to connect it up and then try and get it working. Um, so I'm just connecting up, not going to any detail with it. I will obviously have to set the sky key up, which I will show um, once we've got these powered up. Um, and I'll, I had a few issues on my previous video with that, but I do have a bit of a cheat sheet from, uh, not a cheat sheet as such, uh, but a sort of a stepped guide from setting up uh, the sky uh, ingenious cloud key. So let's get the access point connected up and see what that looks like so again using the poe so just using the cat 6 lead here connect it into the rj45 just trying to hold it to camera so you can see which i am failing at uh, but it's also got a small little uh, double tab for tucking the wire in if you flush mounting it uh, so yeah push that into there uh, and it keeps it all flush to the wall or ceiling whatever you mount it to so again into the switch uh, and this is the access point. So this is your uh, wireless access point for, uh, like I said earlier, right at the beginning of the video, for if you're using iPads or iPhones or any tablet, anything that's using a wireless connect to your laptop, this is where the uh, your internet traffic or uh, network traffic will go through uh, and then get managed um, by the switch and the sky key. Um, so let's, you can see it booting up as we, uh, we've now got it connected. We've got a 2.4 gig light, a 5 gig light, power uh, light, You've got a network uh, light on there just to the left of the 2.4 which is not flashing as yet uh, i'm not sure what the one to the right of the 5 gig is uh, but i will again have a look at the manual and see uh, but yeah so 
I think now we've got it all connected up. Obviously, I'm expecting that network uh, one to start flashing to say that it's uh, got a network connection and um, it can see the switch. But we'll leave it to one side for a bit while it just boots up. And these things can typically take, you know, two to three minutes to boot up, um, even from once they've been set up. Uh, they can take a while to actually come to life as it would be. So I think now. Uh, we've got it connected on the bench obviously yours will be connected throughout a property or wherever you're setting your access point switch and key up uh, but for the sake of this test obviously we'll just do it on this bench uh, so i'm going to leave it like that uh, and now i'm going to follow the getting started sheet that engineer sent me because uh, like i said earlier on one of the previous videos i had a bit of trouble getting it set up so i'm going to uh, go to exactly where it tells me and just follow the sheet uh, as it's instructed so the first thing uh, that it tells you to do on uh, number one on the item is go to ingeniustech.com forward slash ingenious dash cloud forward slash overview dash cloud dash networking. So uh, I will put that in the description below. Uh, so if you're, you are setting this up from uh, sort of standard from default from new, uh, this would be the uh, web address that you want to go to first. Uh, so we'll click on OK there. Now we've got the address typed in and see what we're presented with. OK, so the usual sort of entry screen uh, and there's a small button in the top right hand corner there that says a login. So we'll click on login and then now there's probably an old account, which there is. So I'll just blank it out here. There's an old account from um, my previous video, which I um, had disabled. So I'm going to have to create a new one by signing up in the top right hand corner. So sign up and then sign in once you have confirmed your email address. So once you get logged in, you are presented with this um, startup screen, which has some small uh, overlays, which try to walk you through the software just as you start it up initially. So in the bottom right hand corner, you've got a small chat window uh, box, which you can open up and uh, presumably talk to the engineers guys. I haven't tried it, but it says that they usually respond within a couple of hours. So uh, nice little support in built window. So I think if we are following the uh, cheat sheet, the getting started sheet, it's time to move on to the next stage. So the next stage, uh, once you've logged into the Ingenious account, is to add an organization from the hamburger menu on the top left hand side. So on the top left hand corner, you have the um, hamburger menu. If I just click on it there, there's already an organization set up, which is just labeled network. So if I just hover on there, you can see that that's the add organization button. So I want to add a new organization. So in here, I'm going to put uh, the computer lab. Like so, if I can type right, I will. If I can just, get rid of that. there we go. So the computer lab and I will create the new organization. And there we have it. So we have success. So an organization is set up. So now we need to create a network within that organization. This is so you can have multiple networks and multiple organizations within the same cloud key. So again, hamburger menu, uh, there's a small little drop down arrow, but it says to add a network within your organization. It does talk you through it on the PDF that I showed earlier in the video. And I'm presuming you can delete the one out, but I won't do just yet. So we'll just hover over there, add network. We'll click left click on the mouse and there we go. So we're now going to add a network. And then again, what to call this? Um, let's just call it test network and I would just put ingenious in test and genius network there we go click on create so now we have an organization set up and we have also a network set up within our organization so that's great so the next step in the getting started is to select organization select and the network that was created and then configure the SSID it says to choose configure from the sidebar menu to add your SSID. Um, select a SSID menu to add and configure a SSID. Um, add SSID plus add a, there are lots of add SSIDs. So we're just going to play this by ear. So let's see what we've got in the menu. So we'll go across the left hand side. Make sure that we are on the correct uh, network and organization. We'll just hover over these and just see if we can see the correct menu in here. Uh, like I said earlier, I did get a bit confused with this when I was trying to set up initially. Uh, so we'll just try and find the uh, on a previous video. So obviously on this video, I want to try and walk it through as it is. So I'll click on, what does that say? Network settings available when select network scope. So we've already got the network selected, which we have there. So where 
is our SSID. That's the dashboard. And why cannot I see it? Why can I not see it? Oh, there we go. What was that then? Where was it then? I think I was on the cog. There we go. I don't know why that's not, not been showing. Uh, maybe because I need to be in there. So I need to double click on the network and it wasn't selected. So that's why it wasn't. So I was, um, so you can see there, even though you click on it, it's not selecting the actual organization or network. Even though I hover and it goes blue, what you have to do is double click on the actual. So if I double click on that, you can see it changes in this top window. So that's probably one of the reasons where I went wrong last time uh, when I was trying to set these things up. So now I can see in that top window, I'm on the computer lab, I'm on the test and genius network. And now we have the SSID option. So configure SSID, we'll click on that. And then what have we got? So what have we got in here? So there's already something in here for some reason. Uh, and I've not set any of this up. This is all sort of fresh as we're going along. So I'm not sure why and what that is. Um, but we'll click on add SSID anyway in the top right hand corner here. Because that's what it tells us to do on the getting started sheet. So click on there. And then we'll name the SSID. So this is naming your wireless network. So again, what to call this? If I can type correctly. And it's creating a QR code as I'm typing as well. So test and genius Wi-Fi. And we'll leave most of these as default. I think obviously we want the Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, we can have 2 gig, uh, 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz, or we can have them both combined, uh, which is the usual one, unless you just want to use 5 gig, for example. Different securities um, for logging in, so different wireless key uh, types. So I think uh, now there is certain compatible issues with certain devices, um, but I'm going to leave it sort of as default. Uh, so also we've got 802.1.1R uh, options uh, in the bottom here uh, with some explanations with uh, the exclamation mark. But I'll, again, like I said, I'm going to leave it as default. I'm just going to type the password in. Uh, nothing exciting uh, what we put in here i'm just going to be careful because it might not allow me um if it doesn't recognize it's secure so i'll put just anything in here so a word and some numbers because it will be del deleted this account once this video has been complete so we're just going to create it as that what else have we got options just before we click apply we'll just have a look what else we're in there we can traffic shape uh, our wireless connection and wireless devices captive portal a welcome page which is nice for so for your guests that are logging onto a Wi-Fi guest network you have an option to do your own splash page same as the Unify stuff and you can also do a schedule by looks which means you can turn the um, uh, Wi-Fi access point on and off certain times so good if you've got kids if you're doing this at home uh, but also if you're running a hotel or a business you can have it so it's activated at certain times so that's a uh, nice to know as well so anyway, there we go. So we'll click apply on the settings that we have created and hopefully that should create our wireless network, which it does. I don't know what the cloud one's there for. I'm not sure 100% what that is. I'm not sure if I can delete it or not. Uh, it's saying it's not hidden. So it's an open network. I'm presuming it's an open network on the access point that we're setting up. So we'll just click on it and just see what it is. Uh, so it's, it's possibly just as a default one so you can set up and get going. So I'm presuming you would have to um, disable it or delete that one out of the equation. So it's not actually part of your network. Um, so there's a couple of things here when I've been trying to set up. You can see the just obvious things that although they give us a getting started sheet, I think in that top left hand corner where it was near the hamburger menu and setting up stuff like that, I think it should have um, told you to look up there and make sure that you've got the right network selected. Um, uh, the organization and then your network i think that was one of the, the the obvious things that i was just missing there and even though i was selecting it thinking it was selected it wasn't um showing me that in that top box but anyway getting back to the wi-fi yeah so i've got this uh, the test uh, and genius wi-fi set up here so the uh, last thing to note really on the uh, on the getting started sheet it says any access point that is assigned to this network will take on the configuration of the ssid so basically any access points we add uh, in a second will all take up the configuration of that test and genius Wi-Fi that we've just set up so anywhere that you set up and any access points you add will go onto that same wireless network uh, and if you're running these as a mesh then obviously if you've got a few of them they'll all have the same key etc on that wireless SSID so moving on to the next stage and the next stage according to the getting started sheet is to register 
our devices to the uh, network or organization we've just created. So again, making sure we're still on the correct organization and that network on this top tab here, so which we are still. And it also tells us in the box that we uh, looked at before. So I'll double click on there to make sure we're still in the same organization. I've just clicked on dashboard and as you, just to show you that there's nothing registered to this organization at the moment, as you can see there. So all we have is the software knowing that we're creating an organization at this point. So down to the bottom left hand corner, we click on the inventory tab uh, and then obviously go up and make sure that we're on the inventory section. And then we have registered devices in the top right hand corner. At this point, we can enter a serial number or we can use our phone and I will Put the mobile phone app on so we can see what's going on instead of inputting serial numbers try and make it a bit easier so i'll put the phone on screen on and we'll do that so if you haven't done already the first thing to do is download the ingenious cloud app uh, as you can see on my uh, iphone screen there so once you've done that click on that and enter your login details for your account for your ingenious account obviously i'm blanking mine out here so you can't see my um, username and password uh, the password is obviously the main one uh, but either way i'll be deleting this account anyway but just for testing this product obviously i've blanked it out anyway that's a good practice okay so we are now logged in on the same login that we've just been using on the pc and you can see there's that organization at the top which is sort of the default one and then the computer lab which we created earlier and then from here, we need to hit the plus icon, which is in the bottom right hand corner to add a device. So we're going to add all uh, three of the devices. So I'm going to add the uh, switch access point and the sky key, sky cloud key. Uh, so I'll pick the access point up and we're going to look for the barcode and apologize now for any of the blurring out. That's just to hide the Mac and the serial number. As soon as it sees the QR code, it brings this box up there. You click on register and then it registration is successful. Click on the OK, register more. Let's do the uh, cloud key, the sky key. Done exactly the same. Hit, scan the QR code, device information there. Click register. And then, OK, one more. Click OK, register more again. And then we'll do the switch. Hit, as soon as it sees the QR code. And you also get these prompts coming in from the top, which again are blanked out because they're showing the MAC address and serial numbers on them. Uh, but you do get them alerts to say that uh, they are being registered to your account because I'm using the app currently. Okay, so now we have, you'll notice there in the inventory, it is now showing free uh, that are registered to this particular organization. So we'll switch back to the PC view. And then from here, we're going to assign these devices uh, that we've added to our account to the network that we created earlier in our organization. So to do this, we need to uh, hit the little radio button next to the device that we have just added. Uh, we can select them all, or I, I didn't try it as all, uh, and I didn't do on my previous videos, but I'm going to do them individually. So I'll do the switch first, so click on switch, and then tick the assign to network. It brings this prompt box up. Hit the little button again, the little radio button again, and then click apply. And then what this does now, this will add uh, that particular device to the network that we created earlier. Get the prompt to say that that's been done. So then we'll just double check. If I just go back to the dashboard and I'll just show you that that um, switch is in the dashboard. Now it's done. So you can see there centrally, uh, it says that switch is there. It's not gone green yet, but it has only just been added. So I'll just give it a second just to sort itself out. But it's definitely been added and the access point is not there yet. So we'll go back. Um, so you can see the access point is not there and there's nothing online and it's not gone green. So back into the uh, organization menu and back into inventory. And then we'll click on the um, sky key. We'll do that next. Assign to network, click the little radio button, click apply. And then the sky key, there we go, is assigned successfully. So that's that. And then access point, assigned to network, look, the radio button, click apply. And then that is now all of them devices that we have added to our account. They are now assigned to the network that we created and the organization we created earlier. So now we should be able to go back to the dashboard and, and then we should be able to see these devices in that dashboard. I'll just get rid of them blurred. And now you can see there's a green circle around switches and a green circle around access point. Obviously, if we had um, anything connected to the wireless, then we would see a green circle around the clients as well to show that the devices are connected. 
Um, I did plan on doing a speed test with this uh, access point in this particular video, but it has gone on for half an hour now. Uh, but at least you've got the full idea from setting up from scratch a network um, and um, a PoE switch from Ingenious, an access point from Ingenious, and also a Sky Key so you can control your network remotely um, via the internet. Uh, so it's a full setup really uh, for a small uh, net computer network with a wireless access point. And just for full clarity, if I ever do get around to put in any descriptions and links in the description box below, they will be affiliate links, probably almost certainly Amazon affiliate links, which all that means is you won't be charged anymore, but I'll get a small kickback uh, from the profits to go towards my channel. Okay, so that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching the Computer Lab on YouTube on, on how to set up an ingenious network with an access point. And indeed, if you did enjoy the video, please do hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell icon to be alerted to any new um, content that I produce for my channel on YouTube. And please do hit me up with any comments below. They are always appreciated. And thanks again for watching the Computer Lab on YouTube.